Here's an arch. It's like a cave. It doesn't go super deep, but it's, it's a sandstone arch. I slept here one night. It was great fun. So here we are at this rock house slash grotto, and there's a cave there. It goes in about 20 feet. It's kind of dark-ish, a place where hardly anything can grow. But one of the things that grows there is a fern. Well, sort of a fern. It's a fern called the Appalachian gametophyte that only exists as a gametophyte. It lost the ability to make sporophytes, but the gametophyte has managed to subsist in these protected, perennially moist, uh, free from competition from other plants places in the Appalachians without the uh, benefit of reproducing by spores. It reproduces asexually by jemmy, and it's um, actually related to a tropical group of ferns called the schustering ferns in the genus Viteria. Let's take a look at it, even though it's dark in there, uh, and see the Appalachian gametophyte. It's a happy story. They managed to persist in the face of adversity. The adversity being the Ice Age. The Appalachian gametophyte, Viteria appalachiana, a fern that exists only as a gametophyte. It occurs in shaded rock houses and reproduces asexually by little filiform extensions of the margins of the thallus. It's restricted to grottos and rock houses in the Appalachian region and doesn't occur north of the glacial boundary. A fern without a sporophyte. A happy story of persistence. Here's a crane fly. Wishing I would leave. A what? A crane fly. Maybe the gemmae are dispersed by crane flies. <laughs> so we have a fern. And for ways to recognize ferns. When you see ferns, mostly what you can see are leaves. The stems are almost always under the ground. If they're horizontal stems, you'll see a circle of fern leaves. If they're, I don't mean horizontal, I mean vertical. Well. Whatever I mean, let's move along. One of the things about these leaves, no, I'm gonna start over again. No, I'll start over again. I don't have to start the movie over again because I know how to use Premiere. Ferns, when you see ferns, mostly you see leaves. And one of the ways to tell different ferns apart is to be very attentive to the degree to which the leaves are divided. Most ferns have compound leaves and sometimes they're twice compound or even thrice compound. Also, ferns are non-seed plants that produce, uh, that, that disseminate by great numbers of spores, some of which are in the air right now, and I think are about to make me sneeze. Um, and the, wh wh whether or not they put their spores on normal leaves or special leaves is um, one of the ways to tell them apart. So, with that in mind, Kelly, what is this fern and how can you recognize it in, term, in terms of those things about leaves? Well, this is called royal fern. And one way to know is just based on the habitat to start with, well, we're standing in a wetland. So that's, that's one key for this particular fern. But then if we think about the characteristics that Dr. Clips just told us about, let's look at how many times the leaves divided. So if we start at the base where the leaves start and follow up a single frond, looking at this particular frond right here. It's huge. You can see from the main midrib here, the first sort of branching that happens comes off and there's no leaf tissue connecting that, that branch. So it's fully divided at least once. But then these little leaflets that are coming off. Or you say sub leaflets. Or sub leaflets. Because of what you just said. Right, these sub leaflets if we do the very same thing and start at the base and follow up, again, the um, subleaflets coming off are, there's no flesh. So they're fully divided again. So this is twice compound or wow. twice pinnate is another word that you wow. often see 
and that's IDing ferns. And that's one leaf, that <laughs> huge Mondo thing that's as big as you almost. That's one leaf. Hmm. And um, there's actually two types of leaves here. So this is a heteromorphic fern. Two types of leaves, but one is divided into parts or regions. Right. So we can see on this other leaf here. It looks like it's withered and decayed. Is something wrong with that top part? Is it some kind of disease? Like, Do you see the spores? Hold your breath. <laughs> Hold your breath, viewer from home. <laughs> this is the sporangium. Wow. And there's dusty spores going all over the place. So these sporangia are on a part of the leaf that the rest of the leaf is normal leafiness. In other words, it's divided into regions. Heteromorphic, meaning different form. It's called royal fern. Wow. Great. Let's see if we can find some other frond dissection types, such as once pinnate or twice or thrice pinnate, and frond forms such as monomorphic or dimorphic. So here we have a fern called cinnamon fern, and we're interested in its frond dissection type and its frond form. The frond dissection type, let's start at the base and work our way up and check it out. So we've got a single frond here. And oh wow, look at this, this lovely fuzz we have, this nice cinnamon colored fuzz. So mm. that's a good identification feature for this particular plant as well. But if we move up and we're hitting the leaflets on the frond, these leaflets are fully separated. They're fully dissected. So we've got at least once dissected or once pinnate. But then once we get to the leaflet itself and we move up its center, you can see that those are not fully separated. So that they would be pinnatophid. Pinnatophid. But it's already pinnate, so... What? Pinnate pinnatophid The fine dissection part is pinnate pinnatophid. What a, that's very distinctive. What about the, the spore bearing parts? Is it on the same leaves, different leaves, parts of the leaves? Well, you can see these also cinnamon colored structures here coming out of the middle. So these are specialized fronds that are just for reproduction. So that tells us that this is a dimorphic. That fern looks very ferny. I mean, you know, lacy, kind of delicate, like, wow. Sure does. This is spinulus wood fern. Hmm. So let's check out its leaf division to get started here. So let's start at the base of our frond. Oh, we have some cool kind of like brown scales happening here. So that's hmm. fun. But if we move up the midrib, we're encountering our first leaflet here, branching off. So fully divided at least once. And then as we branch out into our sub leaflets here, it is fully divided again. So twice pinnate. And then we have our sub sub leaflets here. And those, I think we decided that they are fully detached. So we have a thrice pinnate. Or deeply bipinnate pinnatophyte. It's there's a sort of borderline cases, but it's very that's very lacy. Yes it is. I like tripinate for that. And then if we flip Where the spores? over the frond, you can see that wow. on the underside of, of the leaflets, you have the sori that are gonna create the spores. So this is a monomorphic type of frond. Fantastic, and those are called sori. This is a true story. I went out to a, um, a natural area. Oh, you might know this. Too. With um, Mildred Faust. Have you heard of Mildred Faust? She was a botanist yeah. at, 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 in, in Syracuse. Yeah. And she showed me um, um, that rare fern, Philetus scolopendrium. Oh, yeah. The American heart's tongue American. fern. Yeah. And she stood next to the fern and said, this is a site for sore eyes. And that was a joke. as a fern joke. That's adorable. I know. Yeah, she was great. 